All right, thanks so much for sharing your garden with us. And right now we're going to take a voyage to Hawaii, or at least to learn about the plumeria plants that are so famous in those magical isles. I'm joined by two guests today, Kurt Hudgens and his daughter, Bailey. Bailey, welcome to Central Texas Gardener. Thank you. And Kurt, welcome back. It's Thank you. great to have you here. Good to come back. Now, you are uh, a plantsman and uh, do a lot of work with ponds at It's About Time, a great nursery in the South Austin area. Um, but you have a particular passion for plumerias, I had to say that. You can say that. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me, uh, plumerias are the plants that are famous in Hawaii for the, the flowers that create the, those beautiful lays, those mm -hmm. fragrant necklaces of petals that the tourists wear there. Now, how did you get so interested in this plant family? Working in the nursery and just uh, being in contact with so many plant people, running across the plant, the leaves attracted me right off the bat. And, uh, but coming to find that there's so many colors out there that most people don't realize are available to you, just, I started collecting them from all over the world, India, Thailand, Australia, any place I could find, just something unusual and out mm -hmm. of the ordinary. Well, they, they do come in a very wide range of colors, and we're going to talk about that. And, uh, and, and you know, uh, plant nerds are always interested in the things that you, they don't see very often. Right. So it doesn't surprise me that the, the exotic nature of these plants drew the, you, to them. Bailey, now, what do you, what's your favorite thing about the plumeria plants? What, what do you enjoy about growing Because I understand that you work with your dad a whole lot, right? Yes. I especially like that they're, that they're really fragrant. Mm-hmm. They're beautifully fragrant, and, I, and one thing that I didn't really realize, Kurt, is that there are a whole bunch of different kinds of fragrances, aren't there? Oh yeah, I personally have around 200 named varieties of Plumeria, and a bunch that aren't named yet because I grow them from seed. Mm -hmm. um, they vary from, you know, vanilla to baby powder, peaches, mm -hmm. lemons, you name it. And Bailey, you have a particular favorite one, is that right? Uh-huh. And what does it smell like? Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's great, and we have actually that plant right here is the Kool-Aid plumeria, isn't that right? Yes. Uh huh. And this is one. Um, uh, uh, tell me, tell me a little bit about this particular plant. This is uh, a Kool-Aid scent. Mm -hmm. Is it? it I'm, I'm assuming it's a pink flower. It's a darker pink with a, a light yellow center. Mm -hmm. and real pointed petals. Mm -hmm. um, that's her mother plant and we use it for cutting stock. I try to not order cuttings in for people and just grow my own and, and mm -hmm. that way I can guarantee freshness and you know, be able to provide people with as many varieties as I can get here. Well, I think this, the one that you, you brought there is a, has a really beautiful classic form for a plumeria mm -hmm. and it shows that they don't have to be just straight sticks. That right. You can work with the shaping of them and come up with something really beautiful. And I, I really like that. Uh, now, I understand that these plants are really xeric. They really don't like water. The, that's where, where most people get mis, you know, the miscommunication through the, plumer, the, the plumeria world is that they're very tropical and need lots and lots of water. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, in some areas in Hawaii where they get a lot of rain, their soil doesn't retain a lot of moisture. And here in central Texas, with the fact that they don't like our winters and we have to find other ways of growing them, mm -hmm. um, we use container growing, most people do, and you have to use a really well-drained potting soil, cactus mix, and overwatering is about the worst thing you could do for them. You want to treat them more like a succulent or a rosemary and let them mm -hmm. dry out thoroughly in between waterings. All right. Well, we have a, another variety here that you've brought that has a flower that's uh, kind of opening there. Mm -hmm. It's trying. Yeah, this, the, the, I understand all the big plants that you have are the ones in bloom, so they were a little difficult to bring to the studios with you. With it. So tell me what this one is. That's a Carmen. I've had that one probably three years. I acquired that one out of Hawaii. Uh, it mm -hmm. came as just a stick. Um, I'm trying to get it. To, right now it has two inflows on it. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the inflorescence where the flowers are going to grow, you want to get them to bloom as much as possible because that'll cause them to branch. Right. And the more branches, then you, the more magnificent plants you get. Okay. All very interesting information. Now, um, I understand that you help your dad in all aspects of this. And uh, do you help him when he propagates the plants, when he collects the seeds and all of that? No, not really. Not that part, huh? So you leave, you leave the, the plant propagation to dad. 
No, uh, you have to be careful with them because a lot of people don't realize that they are actually a toxic plant. They mm -hmm. have a, a cactus milky white substance to them. And mm -hmm. I don't let my daughters really mess with the plant when I'm doing cuttings. And okay. I'm always very careful about not putting my fingers in my eyes and whatnot. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful plant, but you need to be aware of the milk of it. Okay. Well, a uh, point well taken. And it is deer resistant because of that. Too. Uh, <laughs> I've actually seen them planted in the ground in a few Austin gardens. Mm -hmm. Zilker Gardens has them in the ground. I've got some huge ones in my house that she can climb that are planted right in the backyard. You climb some of these plants? She could. No. I don't let her. <laughs> they can break easily. Yeah, I would think that they would break pretty easily. That's true. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about propagation on these because uh, th th there are two different ways to do it. And one is actually, if you have a plant that actually produces a seed pod, you can collect those, right? Yeah, seed pods, generally most people don't run into the seed pods because it happens on a more mature plant. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people spray a lot of pesticides. So they're constantly knocking back the, the insects uh, that actually uh, do the whole process. It, it's a nocturnal sphinx moth. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a seed pod here. Um, it takes probably six months for one to grow to maturity. It'll come out of your uh, flower spike. Okay. Um, once it gets about eight to 10 inches long, you'll start noticing that they're gonna go more vertical. And I'll wrap them with a pair of pantyhose. Mm -hmm. That way, if you're not home all the time to watch the thing explode, you can catch anywhere from 50 to 100 seeds per pod. Okay. Um, most people don't know of it as a propagation form because one thing, they don't see it on their plants and another thing that they don't, you can't guarantee the variety from seed. Mm -hmm. um, it's either gonna bloom to be the parent, which is very rare, and if it doesn't bloom to be the parent, then you have a one-of-a-kind specimen. You'll be the only one in the entire world. Oh, that's cool. So it's not a guaranteed way to pass on a plant name. Mm -hmm. That's why most people go by cuttings. And this is something I know many, many people have tried, but so many people tell me that they've not been successful with cuttings. Why are they failing? Uh, a lot of people have to mail order them because mm -hmm. they don't know that they're local. And sometimes you can get a plant in that's already wrinkled and withered mm -hmm. and has been cut for too long. But generally, people overwater this plant. I see. The two things that I find most people do that kill their plumeria is they freeze them and they drown them. Mm -hmm. um, what I do is I like to go through my stock early spring. Whenever your leaves are starting to come back out, right. you'll notice that they're kind of getting almost a gluey, sticky substance mm -hmm. to the tips. That means the plant is in a vigorous state of growth. Mm -hmm. Um, that's when I go through my stock and do my cuttings. I'll okay. choose at least a 12 inch piece. Okay. A lot of times I'm just trimming a plant to actually manicure the mother plant and make it branch better. Okay. Um, the end that you cut, you want to let it callus over for about a week or two until it's completely scabbed. Okay. Uh, don't use any rooting hormone, any fertilizer, but you want to plant this in a one gallon pot about four to five inches down. Water it thoroughly. If it's a, a good size cutting, you might have to stake it, bamboo stake it, sure. keep it from wiggling, because you want to keep it pretty still. Sure. Water it thoroughly that day, and then write it on your calendar. Don't touch it for a month. So water it once, and then just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Let the roots start growing from nothing, and then they're going to reach out and try to get through the dryness and try to find moisture, and you can promote root growth a lot better that way. Okay, so excellent. So wait a month, then uh, will you see leaf growth at that point? Well, when you do cut them, I like to take all the leaves off immediately, mm -hmm. and that way you're not fooled. I have no leaves, real leaves on this plant, so once it actually grows a real leaf, that's a pretty good warning sign that you have some roots on okay. the plant, and you can start treating it more like a real plant, watering it just when it's dry. Okay. And definitely don't overdo it. All right. Now, I think that's such great advice and for taking care of plants. What about the cold situation? As I mentioned, I have seen a few in actual gardens in the center mm -hmm. of town here in Austin. Um, it doesn't surprise me, our past few winters have been so mild, but generally this is not a plant you would put in the ground at all. It just depends. Mm -hmm. um, Zilker Gardens, they have a couple of huge plumerias there and just massive. And I'm not sure if they actually plant them or they plunge them. Mm -hmm. A plunging is a method of leaving them in a container, taking mm -hmm. the entire container and burying it in the ground. Come winter time, you can yank it up and uh, store it in your greenhouse. Okay, well, I want to let people know that they can visit you and Bailey down at It's About Time. Mm -hmm. And you have all sorts of things that you do down there. You have seminars on building ponds. I'm sure that you also teach about the plumerias. And a lot of these plants are available there, correct? Yes. 
All right. Well, we hope people will visit you there and uh, start experimenting with these beautiful plants. You, there are lots of beautiful relatives that you brought in as well. Didn't have quite time to talk about those. But if you're interested in some beautiful, beautiful plants with great color, I know that you'll enjoy these. Thank you so much Thank for you. being our guest. And thanks, Bailey, for coming along as well. You're welcome. All right. Coming up next is our friend Skip.